Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In our previous video, we kick-started our journey into JSON Web Token with the help of filters. We did not use Spring Security Components there. In this video, we are going to use Spring Security Components and code in a more elegant and production-ready manner for JSON Web Tokens. Alright guys, I've created a simple Spring Boot application and here's my pom.xml. So I've added the Spring Boot Starter Web, I've added the Spring Boot Starter Security, and I have the JSON Web Token difference here along with uh, you know, the common lang3 the util files which I'm going to use in my application. So the, these are the four different uh, dependencies that I'm going to inject. And now let's go to our configuration. I have a security config uh, which is going to have at the rate of enable web security which is going to enable uh, security at a global level and then I have enable global method security which is going to enable uh, security at method level if I want to use at the rate of pre-authorized or at the rate of secured. Okay So then what I have done is like I'm going to extend the security config with web security configure adapter And it provides customization for web security features and Here I'm going to use authentication manager bean So this authentication manager bean is now included to my security config So this authentication manager is like a parent which is going to hold all your authentication provider instances. So when you do authentication manager dot authenticate, right, it's going to delegate a chain of authentication provider instances. So we are going to use this authentication manager in this case. Okay. So then I've configured the, you know, the configure method. I've overridden as the configure method from web security configure adapter. And I'm going to say my authentication provider is going to be my token authentication provider. All right, then I've created a bean for my filter and the filter is going to take uh, the authentication manager and then there's a authentication success handler. Then I have the configure for HTTP security and it's going to authorize any matches to slash secured and slash secured should be authenticated and in case of exception it's going to call the authentication entry point and then I'm going to return an error message 401 unauthorized and then I'm going to add this filter which is going to be my authentication token filter before the username password authentication filter so this is my configuration now let's go on to a filter first so I have created a token authentication filter which is going to extend the abstract authentication processing filter so there are different filters that you can make use of. For example, you can even make use of the username password authentication filter, once per request filter. Uh, you can even use a generic filter. So in order to make it more you know, elegant, right? I'm going to use the abstract authentication processing filter. Abstract authentication processing filter gives you a bunch of methods that you can use to, you know, to do different op uh, operations on your authentication. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to override the attempt authentication and successful authentication methods here and in the attempt auth authentication when my request comes in with the header token right I'm going to do a set of validations just to make sure that the token is valid so it's going to have the prefix as QWERTY one of the reasons why I kept it as QWERTY is to show that it can be of any string it doesn't have to be always bearer in it it can be of any string that you want you can even apply a second a first level of authentication right to this text also so then uh, once that is done i'm going to create an authentication token so this authentication token is nothing but the user password authentication token so i created a model authentication token which is going to extend the user password authentication token the user password authentication token has like you know things like credentials principal uh, it's authenticated it's going to have the token in it there are a lot of you know things that you can make use of so I'm going to uh, extend my authentication token model class uh, with the uh, username password authentication token so once that is done once authenticated what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to send it to the authentication manager to authenticate when I do this right it's going to invoke all the authentication providers that I have in my bucket and it's going to authenticate the token along different rules so let's go on to one of those authentication providers that I have created here. So I've created an authentication provider and it's going to extend the abstract user detail authentication provider. There's a provider manager also which you can use. 
So here I've overridden additional authentication checks. I don't have anything here, so I just left it as it is. Then I have the retrieve user. In this retrieve user, I'm going to pass my token and try to extract the claim from the token. Once the claim is extracted, then I'm going to create a new user login details, and uh, which is nothing but the user details object, and return back to the you know to the web security. Okay. So pretty straightforward. So if you have a one more authentication provider, right? So once you do authentication manager dot authenticate, it's going to call every authentication provider and you know and, and do does authentication on it. So once this particular authentication provider executes and our claim successfully gets created and all these things is done, right? It goes to the success handler. So success handler is nothing but an additional layer where you can validate and reroute your request depending upon the role. This authentication object is going to contain all the information about the uh, about the user. It's going to contain the user, username, password, and it's going to contain the roles, everything. So the authorities that are provided for that role, everything is going to be present here. And if your application has some you know, business rules to reroute the user depending upon their roles, right? you can very well do this here at the authentication success handler. So these are the three different you know, security filters that I have in place. And then let's move on to our uh, token controller. So when the tr user tries to access my token controller, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pretty much straightforward. I'm going to do a, a, you know, jwts.build. I'm going to set the subject as client text. The client ID is going to be set as the ID. Then I'm going to set the issue date and the expiration date with, uh, I'm going to set the expiration date, which is going to be 60 seconds. And then I'm going to sign this with a signature or from HS512. You can very well do HS256 or uh, there are different algorithms available. You can do whatever, which whichever one is, you know, uh, suits you better. All right. And uh, uh, pretty straightforward. And in a regular production case, right, what you'll do is like you'll get this client text you will validate it with the incoming details against the database then create an object and send back in an elegant way so you can you can even add a functionality to refresh the token most applications will not give access to create or view your credentials so um, you know i would not recommend that the other important thing that i wanted to say here is like try to give one error message don't don't try to give specific error messages like for example let's say this client id the, in this client ID does not match with the database, right? Don't throw an error message like the client ID does not match, client text does not match. You know, don't say like your, uh, you know, that the, the particular element does not match, expiration, all these things, right? Uh, try to give one message that is unauthorized, 401 unauthorized, because once someone registers with your API, you would be providing all the contract and every other possible details to them. So, it, once an application registers with you, uh, it's it, it's going to be seamless authentication and authorization across your uh, different requests. So you don't have to give specific requests. If you give specific requests, right, you're pretty much you know exposing your API in a bad manner. So try to you know keep keep that in mind when you develop your applications. The secure controller is going to be of secured uh, API request mapping. It's just going to say welcome. Okay. So if you want to use user-specific and method-level securities, right, you can very well use uh, pre-authorized uh, secured uh, to it because we are already enabled with, with the help of uh, enable global method security annotation. All right. Um, so let's quickly take a look at our login user details object before we run this application. The login user details object is going to implement the user detail objects of the security uh, you know, dependency. And we, go, we are going to have a username token ID and different authorities so these authorities are being set as roles in your claim when you generate your token right pretty straightforward going to my application.yaml i don't have anything here you don't have to do management.security.enable these things have been deprecated in spring boot and there are there are things that you used to do uh, in the earlier versions of spring boot uh, but you can pretty well eliminate it so my application.yaml is pretty much uh, empty except for security and a server dot port as 9001. So now let's go ahead and run this application. The application has been started. Now let's go to our postman and uh, uh, take a look at this behavior. So here I'm here at my token. 
let me go to my header i'll show you my header my client id is going to be one two three four five my client text is going to be walmart and uh, there's no body and it's going to be a post and i'm going to and i'm going to hit the uh, token uri so when i click on this i'm going to get a response which is going to be the token and it says authenticated true principles credentials details author authorities names all the things you can configure because what we have done here is like we our authentication token is going to extend the username password authentication token so, so that's that's an advantage of doing that instead of sending a string right just a string you can send it in a more elegant way by using a json object okay so in this case you can configure all these things and send it in, in a very good way okay so let's take this token let's go to a new tab so what we are going to do is like we are going to add a new header as authorization and our bearer uh, text is going to be qwerty give you a token here and when you click on send it's going to return back welcome which means our token has been accepted and authenticated let's remove this token and let's try to hit our secure api it's going to throw 401 unauthorized this 401 unauthorized is straight away coming from the authentication entry point that we have configured in the spring security configuration this is a very simple example of uh, no jwt authentication with uh, spring boot application and spring components uh, the different takeaways that i would advise for you is like try to integrate this with an uh, database try to create tables with uh, authorization and authentication elements in it and try to authenticate the user for token try to uh, see how the expiration works and uh, try to configure different claim objects in your um, jwt as a token and that's how you would improve okay uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe for more such videos